Coming up on Ag Week TV, the devastating weed Palmer amaranth is heading north. What you need to know about it. I'm Michelle Rook. I'll have an update on how dicamba injury in soybeans is impacting farmers here in South Dakota. And we'll take you to a very special ranch where the horses do the most important work. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Palmer amaranth is an extremely destructive weed that's moving up from the south. It has a firm hold in Nebraska and is now found in southern Minnesota. It can cause losses of more than 90% in corn and nearly 80% in soybeans. Jonathan Knudsen traveled to Nebraska with NDSU weed scientists and ag groups to learn about the weed and what can be done to keep it at bay. It's a nasty one and it adapts. It's been voted America's number one weed enemy. It's well established here in Nebraska and it's moving its way north into ag weed country. You produce a million seeds on a plant. If two of those can do something different, you can kill the rest of them. Those two are gonna be there for next year. Nebraska farmer Bill Nielsen wishes he'd responded faster when he saw the first Palmer plant five years ago. If I had pulled that first weed that many years ago, I, I, it would be a whole lot better than it is today. And cover crop has made a world of difference giving me that mat of trash that the weeds can't get through. And if they do, they have a hard time getting back up again. Greg Kruger is a University of Nebraska weed specialist. He says Palmer is one of the worst weeds he's ever seen. It's devastating to our growers. Its ability to adapt uh, to different environments, to uh, germinate over a wide range of conditions, uh, to grow in drought conditions. If you see the weed, take it out. Jody Sodhoff has been on the front lines of the Palmer Amaranth battle for years. He's a farm rep with CHS in Nebraska. He says zero tolerance is the key. You can't wait till you have a problem because one weed is a problem in a quarter. And, and I just can't... I just can't scare enough people to make them realize that one weed is, is a train wreck starting. The lessons learned on this trip will be taught across North Dakota this winter. It's part of what will be a long and important battle against Palmer Amaranth. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. NDSU is working on plans to open a research facility to look for ways to control Palmer Amaranth. Dicamba drift damage to crops is a big problem this year. As Michelle Rook reports, South Dakota officials are looking at possible label changes for spraying dicamba on extend soybeans next year. But a lot of that hinges on what farmers find in fields this fall. Complaints continue to come in here in South Dakota regarding dicamba injury in soybeans. However, the jury is still out on what the yield impact will be. In fact, farmers that had some or widespread cupping in soybeans this season may not know the production impact until harvest. The combine will tell. We don't know. Nobody knows. It's, it's one of them things that nobody's seen before, and maybe nothing's going to come of it. Maybe there isn't going to be a yield loss. Nobody knows. Fortunately, we do have the technology of yield monitors and things on the majority of farms, I think, so that will help. Agronomists are looking at past research on the yield impact of dicamba on soybeans for clues. The real key was as long as the growing point wasn't hurt, it was felt that the uh, beans will be fine and recover. However, he says the research was done 40 years ago and the application timing was different then. The difference being is now we are spraying it a month later than we did before and we really don't know how those effects, if they will compare the same or not. Once more is known on yield impact, then states like South Dakota with a one-year restricted label can determine changes for 2018. You know, maybe restricting the time of day to try and get away from those inversion issues. Uh, maybe have uh, restrictions as far as a uh, growth uh, stage or uh, a, a date, calendar date. Plus, EPA is working with manufacturers to decide if they'll impose other label or application changes. I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Jaspers is confident they'll require the product manufacturers to do more education with farmers and applicators before the next growing season. 
Former large-scale farmer Ron McMartin Jr. of St. Thomas, North Dakota, has now filed a personal bankruptcy. This comes after his farm, MCM Incorporated, filed a corporate bankruptcy in February. A full listing of his debts and assets is due later this month. In 2015, McMartin was farming 50,000 acres in the state, much of it on rented land. Sugar beet harvest is underway, but Mindac Farmers Cooperative in Wapaton is cutting back on the amount of beets it will process. American Crystal is likely to do the same. Mindac had already set its planting limits at 17% less than last year, and now it's telling growers that up to another 15% of planted acres may need to be left in the field. Mindac President Kurt Wickstrom says growers were affected by heat early in the pre-pile harvest. Mindac is expecting an average of just under 32 tons an acre. American Crystal has asked growers to identify 15% of acres that may not be able to be harvested to keep storage in line with processing capacity at its five factories. This week's crop stop is something unusual seen near Air, North Dakota. Micklepates found crews putting up long white structures and filling them with 2016 and 2017 wheat. The Arthur Company's elevator is making room in the bin for what's expected to be a big soybean crop. Some farmers in the area have been bagging corn, but bagging wheat is unusual in the Red River Valley. With the wheat that we're bagging out here, we're making, making space for soybean harvest. Uh, we saw a lot of old crop wheat move just prior to harvest, and of course new crop wheat came to town and it uh, flooded the market, making it hard to sell another train. And so we decided it was the best decision to, to bag some wheat and get ready for soybeans. They also plan to bag wheat at their Pillsbury, North Dakota elevator in anticipation of higher prices. Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you about a group working to find common ground between growers and consumers. My name is Joel Kaler owner-operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called the Cornstalk Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra-high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach it to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. For a limited time, Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, is offering 0% financing for 60 months for qualified customers on a large portion of our used combines inventory. For a complete list of our best used combine deals, visit combine17.com or contact your local Titan Machinery store. In addition to long-term 0% financing, Titan Machinery is also offering 12 months free full machine warranty on select late model used Case IH combines. Don't delay. Go to combine17.com or call your local Titan Machinery dealership before the program ends. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, pop right here, now I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. 
Common Ground is a volunteer organization connecting growers with consumers. It was developed by farmers through two national checkoffs, the United Soybean Board and the National Corn Growers Association. In this month's Soy Insight, we look at how the organization is thriving in North Dakota. Less than 2% of the population is actually involved in producing food. Val Wagner is the coordinator of Common Ground, North Dakota. She farms and ranches near Menango and speaks around the state. There are many myths about food and ag, and Common Ground works to help consumers sort through it. We really need to work hard on making those connections and having those conversations so that not only are people comfortable at the grocery store making those decisions, educated decisions, not just out of fear and and the marketing terms that are used out there. According to the Center for Food Integrity, 80% of consumers are interested in knowing more about farming. Their overall impression is about 25% very positive, and 69% say keeping healthy food affordable is one of their most concerning life issues. It's Common Ground's mission to talk to consumers about topics like animal welfare, food safety, hormones in milk and meat, and of course, GMOs. We really want to be a resource for them so that when they have questions at the grocery store or at the restaurant or they're just wondering what they're putting on their plates, that they can come to somebody who's actually growing and raising that food and get their answers there instead of the internet. Common Ground is known for its banquet in a field, a dinner on a farm which connects non-farmers with farmers over a spectacular meal prepared by chefs. They're also involved in many other events. Wagner says a good way to make a connection is to invite someone to tag along in your buddy seat this harvest season. We also encourage our members and, and other farmers in the area to, to do things like harvest visits where people get a chance to actually see what's happening and get involved and, and feel like they're part of the process. Commodity groups involved in Common Ground North Dakota include the Soybean Council, the Corn Growers, and the Beef Commission. Superior Grain Equipment of Kindred North Dakota is working to help countries around the world make better use of their crops. Jong Inglested is the company's international sales manager. He says there's a big need for grain storage in many countries. So recently, the company hosted about 70 international visitors who were here for Big Iron to teach them about improving their grain storage. In Africa, Asia, you see up to 40% post-harvest losses. So we're trying to introduce, you know, viable storage techniques, basically new technology for these smallholder farmers and even the large corporate farmers. And when you think of a world population that we have to feed, you can feed a lot of people with that 40%. The weather has been a real mixed bag lately. What can we expect this week? Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, we'll show you how a North Dakota-made product can save you money during corn harvest. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. Getting better yields is your priority. Helping you maintain your land is ours. Unleash the groundbreaking performance of the Wolverine Extreme. The patented design of the Wolverine Extreme replaces the need for bulldozers, land scrapers, and graders to create and maintain ditches, waterways, and terraces. By scraping and spreading soil in a single operation, the Wolverine Extreme does the job of multiple pieces of equipment three times faster. We can move about 750 yards of dirt an hour, which is far and above uh, the efficiency of anything else in the market. The kicker shaft chews up the soil and then the impeller spreads it anywhere from 10 to 150 feet on either side of the machine. One of our biggest features is the auto clutch. That front beater isn't going to you know, just hammer on things. That clutch will pop and 
you're going to have a, a well-protected drive line. The Wolverine Extreme sets a new standard in ditcher performance. Unleash the groundbreaking performance of the Wolverine Extreme. Call Dynamic Ditchers today to schedule a free demo. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, more people can eat. It is these transitional times of year. The early part of fall, early mid-fall, and then the same thing happens early mid-spring, when quite frankly, any type of long-range weather forecasting is probably at its most difficult of the year. Here's what we have the status right now. First of all, we're getting into the real peak of uh, harvest season throughout the Northern Plains Upper Midwest. We've had some rain, significant rain in parts of uh, the area, especially uh, some parts of North Dakota this past week. It has turned somewhat cool, although we've had a few warm days, somewhat cooler relative to average. And uh, we've already seen in September a few stray frosts. We may be looking at another one. And that may be in some cases this week. Chances are of the first widespread frost for some parts of the area. Although, as I mentioned, in some places there has already been a frost. Here's the basic pattern. Jet stream's been quite high amplitude and quite active of late. It has brought this cool weather, which is mostly here in the northern plains rain-cooled weather. But it has brought a little dip into the jet stream. Fairly warm weather continues over the eastern part of the United States. This cool weather is going to retreat as a drier air comes in, but I think we have a couple of opportunities this week once the clouds and rain moves out of the northern plains for some frost. I'm not sure how far south that would go. Probably not so likely in Iowa, but Dakotas, Minnesota, there might be some midweek frost this week. But that will quickly change as the cold air is shunted eastward later in the week. High pressure ridge proceeds to build out over the Rockies, but it's not really going to bring a great deal of heat. The hot weather will mostly be confined to the southwest, although by the time we get to next weekend, warm weather will build northward. So here's what we're looking at then for precipitation. At the present time, of course, we're dealing with weekend rain. And that's why it's so cold. The rain gradually moves east, gets a second wave surging up, which is why that rain will linger in the northern plains and Great Lakes for so long. And then as that moves away, I think one more uh, surge will come up through this system, but it'll be further east by that time. And uh, that's the way that's going there. We may look for some rain to come out of the Rockies toward the end of the week, and we're not sure how much that will expand but there it is. That's a possibility. Now, here's what we're looking at for the first week of October. A little bit of a change in the jet stream pattern that I think will lend itself towards some cool weather building back into the northern Rockies, which might try to push out to some extent into the plains. And with that in mind, the next precipitation maker, which will probably come out of the Rockies, might be one with rain turning to snow and not just in the mountains. I doubt that would penetrate very far east of the mountains, but it could be another round of cold rain, possibly significant rain for parts of the northern plains. So we're kind of in a wet, relatively cool weather pattern for the moment. Perhaps another chance of frost, but basically that'll be happening in areas where that's right on schedule. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. The future of ceramic nozzle technology is here today with the Total Ag Air Induction Turbo Nozzle, the only ceramic triple spray nozzle on the market. Works with all sprayers for better weed control and wheel tracks. They could be the last spray nozzles you'll ever need. I'm really impressed with them. It just amazes me how they work so well. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. BotLink helps you quickly capture drone data, distribute it to trade tools, and respond to changing conditions in real time. Capture, process, and inspect aerial imagery from your fields to fix potential issues like flooding, nutrient deficiencies, or insect damage. Easily upload drone imagery to our cloud-based software to create valuable, high-definition maps that will help save you time and make smarter business decisions to save you money. 
For a limited time, Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, is offering 0% financing for 60 months for qualified customers on a large portion of our used combines inventory. For a complete list of our best used combine deals, visit combine17.com or contact your local Titan Machinery store. In addition to long-term 0% financing, Titan Machinery is also offering 12 months free full machine warranty on select late model used Case IH combines. Don't delay. Go to combine17.com or call your local Titan Machinery dealership before the program ends. Introducing the new Challenger 1000 series, tractors unlike any other manufactured by Agco. Redefining what a wheel tractor is capable of when it comes to wheel slip, power to ground, and fuel economy. Today, it's not enough just to be tough. You've got to be smarter than everyone else, too. Contact your Challenger dealer today to get in the seat of the new Challenger 1000. Superior engineering, superior performance, superior productivity. The next generation of tractors from your Challenger dealer. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. We're in Lidgerwood, North Dakota on Kaler Farms, and joining us now is the man himself, Joel Kaler. Joel, we're here today to talk about your cornstalk guide. This is a product that you invented yourself about 10 or 11 years ago. Tell us about it. We farm about 3,500 acres, and it's corn and beans. And when I first designed this product, it was because when I went to Poly Snouts, we noticed a lot of corn loss. Tell us how this can save uh, farmers money. Now this is without our product right here, and you can see how much that idler sprocket and the gathering chain sticks out. So when the corn stalk comes in here and hits that, it has a tendency to kind of go forward. The cob might hit here and it'll go flying that way. And that's our idea is to get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing and with less loss. And once we came up with the design, then we had to come up with a product that lasted longer. That's why we make them out of the product that we do make is UHMW, Ultra High Molecular Weight Poly. It's extremely long wearing. The snout you'll wind up replacing because the edges, especially right here, get really thin. And with our product, all the wear is on our product and it's so hard, we don't have much wear. It's very easy to put on. You've tested it. You're seeing a change in bushels per acre when you use the cornstalk guide. We were out here testing it. All we did was take all these cornstalk guides out. We ran every other row for about five passes, put them all back on, ran the other, the odd passes. And there was two bushels an acre difference. That was just straight up and down the field. Where it makes a huge difference is now you're doing headlands where you have rows coming in this way, rows this way, and they're overlapping. And now all that has to be sucked in. That's where you really lose a lot of corn. On average, you think on 150 acres, you can pay for this? Well, 150 acres, you lose two bushels an acre, that's 300, and at $3, that's $900. So our average set for a six row is about $900. Majority of the years, we don't have to spray for corn in our soybeans because the cobs, there's so few of them out there, it doesn't make sense to spray 10 to $15 an acre chemical just to kill the corn. What if you didn't have to spray that field? Now you more than doubled the amount of money you save by having our product. We wanna point out that these are made right here on your farm in this shop. Yes, everything. Everything from start to finish is made here. We get it in fairly good sized sheets and then we start cutting. The product either has to be cut or milled. Joel Kaler with Kaler Farms, thanks for having us today. Thanks for coming. All right, check them out at kalerfarms.com. If you want to order the corn stock guide, you can do all your ordering online or give them a call as well. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to a very special ranch that uses horses to help kids. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable, trusted, 
Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. We're excited to bring you the new Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real-time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you. Download the new Ag Week app today. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than 3 billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to SaveTheFood.com. Six years ago, a man helping care for his niece with behavioral issues got her riding horses. What happened next is amazing. Jason Hibbs tells us about Stable Days Youth Ranch in East Grand Forks, Minnesota. It takes a lot of patience and love to train a horse to be this cooperative. After all, these horses work with some kids who aren't always so cooperative. At least not at first. I never want to ride a horse. I'm scared to death of horses. No, I, I never want to go in the garden because I'm scared to death of bugs or I don't like to get dirt under my fingernails. Ranch owner Ben Lester has heard all the reasons why a program like this just won't work. But there's something about the animals, the garden, and the camaraderie that has a way of changing us. There's something special here. That's why Elizabeth Mears has traveled from Kansas City, Missouri for the past three summers to work here as a mentor. Everybody needs a little assistance, needs a little help, somebody to help them believe that they can do it. And her schedule is anything but rigid. In fact, today she suited up in a dinosaur costume to be hunted and captured by a group of lasso-wielding kids. All right. That's nine-year-old Kyan Olson. It didn't take long for him to warm up to the ranch. He's especially into the horses. They're so um, into you that, that they trust you, like that you can do it on your own. Like you have like a pull thing. Yeah, then you can tell them where to go. As Theodore Roosevelt said, there's something about the outside of a horse that's great for the inside of a man. That's the same for kids. Stable Days is a nonprofit organization. The program is free for kids ages 5 to 17. Thanks for watching. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com. Be sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next week.